it's Ms. Barnhart, and today we're going to discuss the different types of land plants and their evolutionary histories. Based on molecular, cellular, and anatomical comparisons, the closest relatives to modern plants are a type of multicellular green algae called caraphytes. Like other green algae, caraphytes contain chlorophyll A and B, as well as other distinctive features not found in other algal types. Although some debate exists as to whether or not these algae should be classified within the plant kingdom, our, dis our discussion is going to focus on land plants and the move to land. The terrestrial environment was harsh for the first plants, and natural selection favored the organisms that could avoid desiccation. That's just a fancy way to say drying out. These adaptations included alternation of generations, which we'll discuss later, embryos enclosed by protective tissue, a separation of the plant body into root and shoot systems, and a waxy cuticle to prevent water loss. The evolution of these traits is a terrestrial plant marks the origin of the first land plants, the bryophytes. While the bryophytes are all non-vascular plants, they are not a monophyletic group. The best known of the bryophytes are the mosses, but these also include liverworts and hornworts. These plants are characterized by a dominant gametophyte and small stature. They have flagellated sperm. Since they do not have vascular tissue, xylem and phloem, they must rely on diffusion for transport of nutrients, thus all bryophytes are small. The second major event in plant evolution was marked by the development of plants with lignin hard vascular tissues that transport water and nutrients. Like the bryophytes, these plants have flagellated sperm and no seeds. The presence of xylem and phloem allow plants to more efficiently transport materials from one region of the plant to the next, as well as provided structural support for a larger plant. Today, one group of seedless vascular plants still exists, the pteraphytes or ferns. Although ferns can grow much larger due to the presence of supportive conducting tissues, they are still highly dependent upon water for reproduction. Ferns have a dominant sporophyte and their gametophyte is independent. The evolution of the pollen grain and the seed allowed for plants to exist in drier climates. This was first seen in the gymnosperms. Many gymnosperms have cones as their reproductive structures. The gametes are produced within these structures. The pollen grain is the male gametophyte. It has a protective coating to prevent the sperm from drying out. Pollen also allows the sperm to be transferred by wind to female structures instead of swimming in water. The seed, which contains the embryo, the endosperm, which is a nutritive food supply, and a seed coat can remain dormant until conditions for germination are favorable. This helps the plant survive in drier land environments. Gymnosperms include the conifers, the cycads, the ginkgos, and gametophytes. Since the seeds of gymnosperms are not enclosed in fruits, we refer to these as naked seeds. They generally rely on wind for both pollination and seed dispersal. The final step in plant evolution was the appearance of fruits and flowers. The flower is the reproductive organ in angiosperms. Most plants you see daily are likely angiosperms as these dominate our landscape today. Flowers often have brightly colored petals or scents that attract, that attract pollinators to transfer the pollen and make fertilization much more efficient than wind pollination. The ovary contains the seeds and will develop into the fruit. Fruits help ensure that seeds are dispersed farther away from the parent plant. We will talk more about angiosperm reproduction later in the lesson.
Both angiosperms and gymnosperms have dominant sporophytes. In fact, the gametophytes have been reduced to just a few cells within these reproductive structures. For now, focus on the main classes of plants and the characteristics that allow them to better survive on land.